you don't know boxing, if you really think Pitbull beats me, I fought so many fighters like that in my life, it will be a field day. So this is um, Ryan Garcia's treat, tweet regarding um, Isak Pitbull Cruz. Ryan believes that he would have an easy time being able to beat Isak Cruz. I disagree. I'm going to allow y'all to read the tweet. But Ryan Garcia is trying to trick his fans into believing that he will be able to beat Isak Cruz. I don't think that he will beat Pitbull, even though Ryan will have the weight advantage. Um, and when Pitbull and Ryan, if they fight, even more credit will have to be given to Pitbull because unlike Tank Davis, they'll be fighting at 140 and there won't even be a rehydration clause. And I think Pitbull will walk through Ryan Garcia. I don't think Ryan has the, um, the full toolbox necessary. And Shakur Stevenson spoke about this on Twitter, but it takes a great boxer to be able to deal with relentless pressure in the style that Pitbull has. Exactly. Ryan doesn't have the footwork. What's good, KJ? What's up, man? What are we talking about today, fam? You're talking about Ryan Garcia saying that if he were to fight uh, Pitbull Cruz, he would beat him. If you read this tweet, Ryan says, you don't know boxing if you really think Pitbull beats me. I fought so many fighters like that in my life, it would be a field day. <laughs> Please, look, look at what Luke Campbell did to him, and he's not even a puncher. Like... <laughs> that was a great answer. But has Ryan fought somebody like like Pibble Cruz, kind of in a way, but no, not really. No, I don't people think people are trying no, to say Duarte, but Pibble and Duarte don't even fight anything alike. Ryan no, made fought people that fight like Pibble and the amateurs, but amateurs are three rounds. He's never been in there with somebody who's coming with that type of pressure for twelve rounds. Everybody that's in the chat, make sure y'all are tapping the screen. There's no way that we got zero likes right now. We got to be tapping the screen, liking the live. Seeing how Ryan struggled with um, uh, Dorte's pressure, he ain't beating Pitbull. Thank you. Hey, Wickedy, thanks for liking a lot. Pitbull with Drag Garcia. Sal, thanks for liking a lot. Pitbull fought great against Tank. I believe Pitbull would dominate Ryan. I think it would be just like the Roly fight. And that's the thing. People trying to get on Roly. Pitbull would do that to a lot of fighters. He would do that to Ryan Garcia. Like, that's, that's just what it is. Yes, Ryan would, he would dispose of Ryan within maybe four to five rounds. If he even got that far, like, I don't know if he'd get that far against Pitbull with the kind of pressure and everything he puts on him. Yeah. Pitt is and it's, the tank, I'm sorry. Um, no, we didn't, we're not talking about tank 304. We're talking about Ryan. Yo, KJ, does his size determine how hard you can punch and take punches? No. Some people, they, they could take punches and they don't necessarily have a big head. Like, um, oh, that guy that, um, that guy that Ray Robinson, he whooped his ass a lot of times. Um, they call it the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. He didn't have a big head. I can't think of his name right now. We're, the fight's on the 20th between him and David Haney. Yeah, I believe 420. so. Oh, okay. So that's like two weeks away. Yeah. Terrence Crawford as well don't got a big head, no diddy. Yeah, Terrence Crawford doesn't have a, a um, you know, a, a large yeah. foot, but he could take a, a great punch. Has Crawford ever been dropped? Uh, no. no, but he's been stunned by Gamboa and a me machine. And then he's off in his show. Machine, his knee kind of touched the ground, I believe. Oh, okay. Because I wasn't sure. Was that the first time Earl Spence had ever been down when he fought Crawford? Yeah, Earl has never been down under the lights before. There are rumors that Earl has been dropped in sparring. And was it that oh. with Floyd or something like that? No, they said Floyd had him hurt. But they said it was people saying that Earl was getting looking bad and potentially got dropped when he was preparing for the um, Pacquiao fight. And then Arrow ended up having to have eye surgery. So you believe Earl Spence will beat Fondora easy? No. You think Fondora will win? Not necessarily. I think it's going to be a hard fall fight that Arrow Spence wins. Because Arrow, 
Um, once again, had all that time off, just like before you fought Crawford. He's aging. Um, he didn't necessarily take care of his body. So I don't know what to expect from Errol, but even if Errol wins, it's not going to be like he just steamrolls Fondora. Um, it's going to be a tough fall fight, a back and forth type of fight. And I think and then, Errol's experiences was going to bring him through as well as his um his work rate. It was good, and, Brian Cofield. And uh, Fondora is a suspended for, I think, a, un, until like September or something like that. And then they're going to uh, maybe uh, maybe announce it next January or something like that. But but I but I just think if if Tim Tzu didn't have that cut, he would have easily uh, dropped Fondora twice or like knocked him out. I mean, yeah, he stay hurt before he had the cut, but Fondora wouldn't go down. He had him hurt in like the second round. Fondora was on wobbly legs. So. Yeah, yeah, they got to run that shit back, though. KJ no, had rent money. Back, man. Hey, if y'all in here. Make sure y'all liking the live, all the um people that's in the chat. Thank y'all. Brandon Cofield, thanks for liking the live. Go ahead, Wickedy. I was saying you had rent money on that shit. That's why you, you wanted Fundora to win. <laughs> I didn't bet. I didn't bet. I knew they was gonna win. What? what? I thought you put money up on it. No, nah, I ain't put no money. I bet people like um I bet people that come up on a live, but I didn't really they ain't have to really pay me. I was just fucking around. But I knew Fundora was gonna win because politically if um uh, which McCullough didn't dominate or he didn't get a knockout, I told y'all PBC wanted to work through Fondor. Fondor could be a, a, a major cash cow in the sport. It's just that I don't think he's gonna have the boxing ability to do that. Yeah, for sure. I mean, he's a big strong guy. I don't know where his boxing ability stands though. But he's a big strong guy, I get it. And he's durable. He could take a punch. Yeah. I don't know if that that fight that when he got knocked out was that at one fifty four by that Mendoza guy. Yeah, that was one fifty four, and um, he was winning that fight. It's just that he messed up. Mendoza Mendoza countered him. Fundora was in the middle of punching. He caught him in between punches, and um, Fundora couldn't get off the canvas. He's been on the canvas before, but Mendoza must have caught him uh, better than Lubin caught him because he couldn't he couldn't uh, respond. Hey, what you, you think, think about? Has a good chin. Yeah, I think Arrow has a good chin. Um, Errol Spence had never been down in his career until he fought Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford has knocked out everybody since going to uh, welterweight. And Terrence Crawford has like 30 KOs on his record. He's 40 and 0 with like 30 KOs, if I'm not mistaken. So most of the guys who get in there with Crawford, they get dropped and stopped. So it's not, it doesn't mean you don't have a chin. Terrence Crawford is just one of those ones. Terrence Crawford came up from 135? If he didn't have a chin, he would have gotten knocked out. Yeah, that's true. Terrence Crawford came up from 135? Yes. Okay, so he brought his power to 147. Yeah, throughout the years, too. Not like no flash. Terrence would take his time. Hey, Brandy, Brandy Cobbs, thanks for the gifts, but Terrence took his time developing. Could but if, if Ryan loses his fight, do you think he should deserve another title shot soon or no? It's not about what you deserve. It's about what you could bring in. Ryan is bringing in money, so I guess you can say he would he would always deserve it because he's generating the money. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's a celebrity. He's a he's just like a circus attraction at this point, basically. Yes. Some people just watch him just to see a, a celebrity fight, not even to see a fighter fight. So, because he's a giant star, yeah, he really is. The the, the, the pay per view fighters are all celebrities. If you're if you're selling pay-per-views, um, making money selling pay-per-views, you're a celebrity because people all across the world are tuning in for the pay-per-view. So that's part of boxing. But would you say behind Canelo, he's the second most popular fighter in the world? Nah, man. No. Fuck. Hey, Who's uh, number two? Tank. Tank. Hey, uh, speaking of... Uh... Of a tank, how much pay per views do you think that the David Benavides and the tank card is it going to do? I think that they could do anywhere between three hundred and fifty thousand and five hundred thousand. I can go with that. Yeah, you know why? Location. Frank Martin is known in Texas. Tank Davis is known all across America, but in Texas, they have a very, very big boxing community. 
uh, those motherfuckers gonna be buying that pay per view, and Texas is still one of the largest states in America. So yeah, that's that's where most of their market is gonna come from. That's why they fighting over there, and that's really why they make make the fight with Frank Martin because they understand the Texas audience is a loyal audience. Why do you think Errol Spence is a uh, star in the sport? And then they sold out the Billy Joe Saunders fight with uh, Canelo too. Yep. And I'm actually gonna be going to that fight because I'm because I live a, live like two hours away from like Houston. You're in Texas. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people that follow me, Wicked, are in Texas. Damn, I'm in Cali, California. No, that's my other following base: Texas and LA. Texas, LA, and um, Atlanta. Those are the major cities in Chicago. Those are the four main places where my followers are at for whatever reason. You're in Maryland. Yep. Were you born there? Yep. Also born and raised, huh? Yep. So wait, KJ, when's your next boxing? I'm at your fight. When's your next fight? I don't know. I'm going to my. I'm going to my gym. I've been staying in shape, but I'm going to my gym. Uh, probably a week or two from now, and then I'm gonna talk to my coach, and we'll see. But I'll probably try. I want. I want to get like ten more amateur fights to end out the year, then go pro. Somebody says, "Man, I'm from Alabama." I don't know if you follow me though, Alabama. I don't got that many followers from Alabama. You think Pitbull beats Tank the second time? The second time Pitbull has a greater chance to beat Tank because he's gonna have a full camp. The first time he only had two to three weeks to get ready. Tank was already getting ready for a fight. Oh, he said he's from Birmingham. What's up, Birmingham? But, but do you think the fight the, between Tank and Pitbull would have been different if he didn't break his hand? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Are you, are you open class biggest bird? That's a that's a great question. When I had five amateur fights, I signed up for the open class Golden Gloves, and I've been fighting open class ever since. So I didn't even know about the um, open class and the novice shit. As soon as I knew that I could fight top, you know, top competition, that's what I did. Whereas it's a lot of guys in the amateurs, they'll have 20 fights and try to fight somebody who's green. They'll try to fight somebody on their debut because, uh, you know, that's just how, that's just how they are. So yes, I am open class. I've been open class pretty much since I started. Second fight, Pitbull goes to sleep. No, full Chris. He said that Tank will knock him out in the second fight. Full Chris. Mmm. He might knock him out. You think, but Pitbull could take a shot like a motherfucker, though. He's yeah, terrible. But, but Tank did hurt his hand. So, and Pitbull is still not that big. Like, they're both around the same size. So, if Tank doesn't hurt his hand and he's applying that pressure that he was applying early on the whole time, he might knock him out. Yo, KJ, is having big hands a good thing in boxing like Crawford? Of course. That's like having big hands in basketball. It's not a good thing, it's a great thing. I mean, look at Deontay Water. I mean, he has big hands. Yeah, Roberto Duran. Frank said he hurt Tank and Spar. Yeah, I know I'm doing a video on that sometime next week. I don't see a KO, but I don't know if he will stop him. Uh, if Tank could fight Pitbull Cruz and he doesn't get injured, he, he, could, he could stop him. But it's not going to be with no head shot. It has to be a body shot. Would Tia be a body shot. Would Tia Fimo beat Pitbull? You think? Mm. No, no, no. Pitbull would walk him down. Tio wants to come forward. You're not going to beat Pitbull coming forward. But Tio wants to come. He doesn't want to have to win on the back foot. The dude who beat Tio, Jermaine, uh, what's his name? Jermaine Ortiz. You, yeah, yeah. You would beat Pitbull. What about Cambosos? Cambosos? No. Oh, no. Cambosos. I know he, he's kind of like Vanilla Ice to me. He's just a one-hit wonder. He only had that one win over Tia Fimo. I think Vanilla Ice had two good songs, though. For real? Yeah. Man, dude, I, trust me, I was born in the 80s. I did never hear that fool's music. Just that one song. <laughs> he might have had it. Teenage song. Mutant Ninja Turtle movie. Yeah, oh, I go it. Ninja. Go yep, Ninja. Oh, yeah. yeah. When the TDM oh, Ninja DJ? Turtle movie, that motherfucker had another song. I knew it. Yeah, that was my favorite yeah, name. Right? Yeah, it was on straight, that. Straight, straight edge, straight edge, STL, thank you. 
Go Ninja, Go Ninja, Go. Yeah, Vanilla Ice had two good songs. Stop playing with my man. Okay, all right, all right. I give that white boy his credit. <sighs> oh, man. Pitbull did horrible against Cabrera. No, that is a myth. That is a myth. You cannot knock everybody out. Yo, Wiki, who did Sugar Ray fight on the St. Valentine's Day Massacre? I can't think of his name. Was it a famous? Was it um, Donnie Lalande? No, the the one they used to call him. I think he's not. Did they call him the Bull? No, I didn't call him the Bull. Lamata, it was in Jake Lamada. Oh, Jake Lamada, hey, raging. Thank you, man. You you helping? You you moving a damn lie. Jake Lamada, he got his ass whooped and would not go down. He would not get knocked out. It doesn't mean that Sugar Ray had a bad day. Some guys just aren't going to get knocked out. That's part of boxing. Pitbull I mean, got in a draw with Tank. No, you shouldn't have. Y'all need to stop arguing for draws. It's like people saying Loma should have got a draw with Devin Haney. The only draws that they should get is the draws on their ass. Shouldn't be <laughs> draws should be extremely rare in boxing. Like it's about winning and losing. You know who was never dropped or never knocked out in boxing ever? Who? You remember Oliver McCall that knocked out Lennox Lewis? Hmm. He was never knocked down. He was never knocked out. He lost. I mean, I don't know if you seen. He started crying in the second fight with Lennox Lewis, and then he just surrendered. He was never knocked out or never, never knocked down. I mean, you know what it's called, though. At least it ain't about how hard you get hit. <clears throat> it's about how hard you get hit. Yeah, that's true. For real. Well, so if you got durability, you could go far. If you got a chin, you got a chance to win. But how long is that gonna last? May blasted Mayweather to his forties. I mean, if you got a chin, your chin could, like Pitbull, Pitbull might get start getting rocked in his thirty, you know, early thirties and shit. But cause cause punch resistance goes away with age. Especially if you don't stay in shape. Pitbull, he he like to eat a little bit, I could tell him between the fights. That's why I knew that 140 wasn't gonna be a big transition for him because he was looking chubby and shit in the in the um first press conferences and I was like, damn, I didn't know Pitbull likes to blow up like that. I guess now that he got a little bit of money, he eating. And I guess that's why Canelo doesn't get hit well what doesn't get like uh uh like bleeding a, a, a like a lot because he's like muscular and he's t take care of himself really, really well, I guess. No, Canelo, he parties and drinks. He don't really take good care of himself, but Canelo does try his best to stay in shape. And um, Canelo is tough, man. He has a, a nice chin. Um, his skin isn't uh, too fragile. Like, he's just naturally tough. But it's, it's not because he's necessarily putting forth all this money towards, you know, keeping a clean regimen, a clean diet and all of that. That was, that was Floyd's thing. Canelo is a natural. He eats a lot. He puts on a bunch of weight in between fights. He drinks. Ryan got hit so hard by Tank, his brother felt it. Damn. Oh, yeah, the uh, epilogue or whatever. Have you seen, like, the epilogue? No. Epilogue of, of what? Of uh, Tank versus Ryan. Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. He, he went down on a knee right in front of his mom. Yeah. He looked through the ropes like his mom was, like, literally, he's, like, looking his mom in the face while he's on his knee. Somebody Most said, I think Pitbull loses to Ryan. Well, how and why? How do you like what? What is Ryan gonna be able to do? All y'all say is the same shit. A hook, a hook. I'm not trying to hear that. Like last live, somebody said, you know, um, brawlers they're susceptible to hooks, and it's like, bro, the hook ain't work on Tank. The hook barely worked on damn Duarte. Like it's and not you're not gonna be Pitbull with one punch. And it for sure isn't going to work on Devin Haney, but I mean, I don't, Devin Haney's not going to stay in one spot. Do you watch UFC KJ? No. Uh, Devin said, um, Devin said that if Ryan wasn't popular, him and, him and Ryan wouldn't even be sharing the same ring. Yep. Social media did that. Did that for Cause I look at it realistically. Ryan was a star even before he got the tank fight. He was a celebrity. Like how the fuck did he get to that? With no championship fights or anything else. So I was like, how the fuck is this fool as big as he is with not accomplishing shit? Because of TikTok and the and uh, the body shot challenge. Yeah, a lot yeah, of them. Ryan does them, them drills. He looks very, very good with the drills. A lot of people consider him to be attractive. He has the Mexican fan base and the European fan base. So 
<laughs> oh my. You put all those things together, you get, a, you know, a, a star. You get somebody that's very marketable, uh, global, worldwide. I'm waiting to see if Ryan develops more skills in Ring IQ. Keep on waiting, waiting. <laughs> KJ. Oh my God! Wait, the the fact that St. brought that up, I saw a TikTok the other day. It was playing clown music, and it was showing Ryan. And you know how he does the body shot challenge, and it says he made people do the body shot challenge for years, and he failed the in the the ring against Tank with a body shot challenge. And I was like, that's cold. Bro. I mean, Ryan. I mean, look, Tank hit hard as a motherfucker. The only thing about that is that Ryan could have kept going. But it's like, I guess he figured, okay, if I can't beat this motherfucker right now, then what's the point of me taking all this extra damage? So really, it looked weak what Ryan did, but it was smart what he did because he lives to fight another day. Sometimes you got to do that. Honestly, I don't, I don't, people keep saying, I want to see a rematch with Ryan and Tank. I don't want to see that. I mean, he's just going to die again. I don't want to see the rematch with Ryan and Tank. He'd be knocked out even more vicious in the rematch. Like, what is Ryan going to do? He's not going to develop. I want to say Ryan has no dog in him. I disagree. I mean, he got off the canvas against Luke Campbell, got up and stopped him. He got off the canvas against Tank Davis in the second round and then came back still trying to win. It's just that he got he couldn't deal with that body attack. He couldn't deal with the shot that Tank had landed on him. Ryan has the uh, the first behind. Huh? I don't know what you're trying to say, bro. No, nah, Ryan going to work on the left hook. He doesn't have to work on the left hook. He already has that. He has to work on... The left foot, you know what I mean? Work on the footwork. What about Ishmael Barroso? I mean, Barroso, I mean, he's just old, but he got that power. He's dangerous. Would he knock out Broner if they fought Barroso? Oh, yeah. Uh, Yeah, I think so because he's been active. Broner hasn't been active. Do you think Loma was robbed by Haney? No, because Haney isn't a judge, so I don't think that Haney robbed Loma. I don't think Haney took a lot of the early rounds. We well, need to go back and rewatch the fight. The only reason why Loma lost is because just like against T.O., he started slow. Elvis will be Pitbull, in my opinion. Oh, maybe. Elvis is underrated. Elvis is underrated. I what? like one of his fights. He has some very, very great tricks coming from that southpaw stance. So, yeah. What, what, what's that guy's name? Would he be a good fight against Pitbull, Virgil Ortiz? Virgil's in a... Um, isn't he up at uh, 154? Yeah. Oh, he is? Yeah. yeah. How come his name he ain't out there? Fight the... against Boots. Oh yeah, like why isn't he famous, dude? He should be on. He should, they see he's a champion. He's got all knockouts. Why isn't his name out there? Like, well, on, um, bro. well, uh, did you see the tweet that uh, that uh, Oscar said about uh, Jermel Charlo? Oh, uh, what he said. So Oscar said, like, uh, well, uh, well, you'll see Virgil Ortiz after he fights in uh, April, or something like that. It'd be interesting, but there's not many. Is isn't is just Charlo's the only it's famous one? Charlo and and Terrence Crawford. Well, they were they were talking shit at the fight when he knocked out Spence. Though. I don't know if you've seen that. You saw that? Yeah, stand. no. Crawford was talking shit. Crawford knocked Spence down, walked over to, to Charlo, and said, "You next." Yeah, and then I seen the epilogue. Charlo's like. I fuck with Canelo. He can't fuck with me. And then he gets beat up by Canelo. So, and it's crazy because Deontay Wilder didn't even know who, who who he was fighting, even though that it was announced like a week ago. Hmm. But let's be honest. That was was that not the most horrible performance when he fought Canelo? Like he was like he was just there to survive. He came to perform. He came to survive. Jesus Christ! Like. Should he be? He should be. Like, was that? That was just crazy. I can't believe we paid to see that. I don't know if it was gonna be like that shit. Nah, Pitbull taking over the division though, for sure. Bro, Roman, what's up? What's good, bro? You think what Pitbull it could be Ryan? I mean, to be honest, yeah, I, I see it. I can see too. it. He just gonna walk him down. Ryan body body shots gonna break him down. And then he gonna drop it. He don't keep his hands up, so you already know what's gonna happen after that. It ain't really much to say. Yeah, I, I agree, man. But yeah. I seen that shit coming with Roly, Roly, Roly fighting somebody with that that fights like him. Like he he brawls, but he can't take hits, as you seen with Tank and Pitbull. Just and he put the gas, but you know what I'm saying.
Mm-hmm. That's how that went. So I, I think Subaru over Matias would be a good matchup with him. But I still see Pitbull walking everybody down. Do you think Pitbull can beat, uh, damn, what's his name? Do you think Pitbull can be uh, undisputed at a 140? Hell no. Nah. Nah, because he's going to fight somebody like Haney that's going to probably, like, I'm going to be honest, they're not going to. Yeah, Haney, Haney's going to be Pitbull. <laughs> Haney going to make Pitbull, uh, he, he going to be Pitbull with ease. He going to make him look stupid because he's not going to stand in front of him all night. That's and just cool. because Pitbull is a midget to, to Devin Haney, like he just is. Tank and Pitbull around the same size and height, so Tank had much a much harder time. All Devin going to do, do is manage his distance, jab, and move. Like, Devin will make Pitbull look like he not even a, he'll make Pitbull look like he a chihuahua, man. No bullshit. <laughs> no, that's a fact. Y'all on that. But shit, I'm off here. I just wanted to add that, bro. Y'all be easy, you feel me? All right, Roman. All right, bro. Hey, guys, get there. Who you got, man? Ryan Garcia, Pitbull Cruz. I got Pit. Uh, I got Pitbull Cruz easy. Me too. Easy, easy. Easy work, I think. But I think Matias beats uh, Pitbull. Mm, that's that's a fight. That's a fifty fifty fight. I don't know who gonna win that. I I think his body his uh, body punches will make the difference. Hmm. You speaking your feelings about Haney that he beats Cruz? Nah, Angel Eyes. You and your feelings, bro. And, and you be trying to DM me and stuff. That's how I know you be in your feelings. But yeah, bro. If God gets it, I'm gonna mute your mic. I'm mute your mic when you want to talk. But you got a lot of background baby noise and stuff. But anyway, Angel Eyes, um, Devin Haney is much taller than Pitbull. He has way longer arms. Pitbull doesn't use angles. He doesn't even, he, he walks in a straight line. So that's going to be an easy fight for Devin. It, it had nothing to do with feelings. It had nothing to do with race. It's just basic shit. Don't forget Haney was outclassed by, by Lomachenko, but who, 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 who won the fight after all, though? I mean, I mean, who? Yeah, Lomachenko is more talented than Devin Haney. Devin's frame was still too much for Loma, and Loma has way faster feet than Pitbull. There's nothing Yo, Pitbull can you hear me? It was good, yeah. You can hear me? Yeah. Damn, that's crazy. I don't got a thousand followers. I thought it wouldn't work. But here, I, I just got to say, uh, honestly, bro, a lot of these people are casuals, bro. They think that. Uh, I was just talking to someone in the comments. They were talking about how. Tank is too scared to go to 140, and how oh, Tank is just like not that strong. You know what I'm saying? Tank gonna have a choice. He's going to 140. Hey, uh, KJ. Hey, hey, KJ. Yeah. Don't we say that you're biased to Mexicans? He just yeah. said Pitbull. He just said Pitbull will beat Ryan. What the heck? No, like scroll, scroll up. It's a L L D T T X one. Man, I don't really think that. It just spits facts. Yo, Brandon, when you're not talking, mute your mic because you got a lot of background noise. It sounds like you um, you got a um a song. A vacuum. <laughs> oh, we just will, will be good, but for them now because we just is, I think too old, and uh, I think really just needs to like take. A, Take, take like a big break or something. Wait, hey, would that be a question? What do you think of uh, Abdullah Mason? Great athlete, great boxer. I think he's next up. I'm not going to lie. Hey, what about Jared Anderson? You think Abdullah Mason could beat Shakur Stevenson? Hell no. So then he's not next up then. Anderson, Jared, uh, Anderson. Yeah, Jared Anderson. I mean, there's nobody in heavyweight nowadays, so it's, it's, it's uh, his for the taking. All Fury, are old. Huh? Fury and Usyk soon? Yeah, it's yeah, in the. There's two old white boys that already lost. that got fake undefeated records. Like, it's not as as what it's piped up to be. Fury lost to Ngannou, the whole world saw it. Usyk lost to Daniel Dubois, the whole world saw it. So it's like, that fight isn't what it's cracked up to be. But it's soon? Yeah. 
It is. You're gonna, but you're gonna watch it though, right, KJ? Just because you're like to dissect the fight to see what happens. Yeah, yeah, no, not really to dissect the fight. I'm gonna watch it just in case I can get some highlights and get some views on TikTok. That's a fight that I really don't give a fuck about. And I picked Tyson Fury to win that fight, by the way. Wait, why? Why do you pick him to beat Usyk? I'm not. I don't know. I don't like betting against Tyson, man. Like, if push come to shove, he gonna cheat. He gonna do something. Do you think his size will play a factor why he wins? Oh yeah, of course, of course. He he has weight advantage. Knocking him out. Yo, race pacer, what's up? Yo, what's up, big bro? I got a question for you for tonight's matchup. Um, with with Richard Hitchens with that guy, how you think that fight would end up? I don't even know who Hitchens is fighting, but. I'll tell you one thing, uh, the fact that I don't know who Hitchens is fighting and the fact that the fight is under Hitchens promotional company, I think Hitchens is going to win. Another thing is Hitchens is at uh, well, 140. Right. Yeah, so Hitchens has to, he got to start calling out the Devin Haney's uh, of the world. Now, when you think about if Hitchens does fight a Haney, how would you break down that fight though? Hitchens is, has a, a better deck to work with. I think Hitchens is a little bit taller than Haney. Um, I think Hitchens is a little bit longer arms. And I think Hitchens is a better natural athlete. But Haney, Haney has better um, experience under his belt. Haney has the experience. But I think Hitchens will end up winning that fight because Hitchens, literally, he, he a matchup nightmare. Haney used to be in the taller guy in the ring. This is going to be the first time Haney in there with somebody that's his size, if not bigger, that has just, just the same amount of boxing skill and the same amount of dog. Somebody mm. says Hitchens will probably make Haney look bad. Another thing is Hitchens said mm. in the video that Haney has gotten way more publicity and they pushed Haney way more than him. And I think that's probably because, um, you know, the you know the colorism. And plus, if you are a dark skin as an athlete, you got to be twice the salesman. Of, of someone who's brown or lighter. And Hitchens right, isn't right. that. He's not really somebody that's, you know, great at selling these fights. So he doesn't really make people interested in watching his next fight. But I do believe that he probably could be Haney. Uh, I mean, I can agree, I can agree and disagree. Um, only because I just see that ha Devin has been tested in those tough fights with, uh, with Lomachenko, who was a very skilled fighter. But Loma I, is a baby though, and then I said when I say Loma is a baby, Loma was coming from one thirty, and Loma is like five five. So literally, Devin Haney dwarfed Lomachenko. He's not gonna dwarf Richard Hitchens. That's gonna play a a major factor in their fight. But imagine, imagine now we see a a more developed. I believe we see in this fight with Ryan, we'll see a little bit more developed and more experienced Devin Haney with a little bit more power. How does Ryan Garcia prepare him for uh, Richard Hitchens? Uh, I could say the height. He would get used to the height fighting someone who's tall. That's, I think Ryan that's is a great, that's a great response. I can't even argue that. Um, that is good. Yeah, that's and but but ultimately Hitchens, I think, is a better boxer than Ryan. Much yeah, more yeah. dangerous fighter than Ryan. Hitchens, he rolls with a Shakur, if I'm not mistaken. Those guys are, are all about dis distance management, just like Devin. So when they fight, it's going to be a boxing match. I agree uh, with you. It's going to come down to who has a superior boxing skill. Unless Hitchens tries to, you know, get physical with Haney, which will probably be his best bet. Right. And I agree with you on that sense because that David Haney-Hitchens fight will remind you what Earl and, 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 and uh, Spence was supposed to be. Yeah, that's what it, that's probably what it's going to end up being. Because I think Hitchens, he's going to stick to boxing, and we know Haney coming to box. Earl was trying to fight Terrence. He was trying to fight a boxer and he just ended up getting counter punched all night plus that with the accident and him being weight drained and all that it was just horrible man like whoo but to be frankly honest i think hitches would catch an l first way before he'll get to Devin. yeah because this is the promoters don't really give a fuck about him they're not going to protect him from a fight that's close you know what i mean so you're right on that But it shouldn't matter if Hitchens catches an L. Haney's a legacy fighter. Haney will Haney fuck around and still give Hitchens a chance just to show that he's better than him. Like, if Haney continues to win and pick the opponents that he's been picking, he's going to be uh, remembered as, as 
someone who took boxing serious and who was just better than his contemporaries in his day. So he's going to be a respected boxer in the annals of history. But um, if he, whether Hitchens wins or loses, it doesn't. it's not going to matter whether or not Devin Haney gives him the shot. It'll just be a shot that Hitchens has to wait a little bit longer to get if he takes a loss. But I do with this Ryan Garcia and Devin fight, I, th- I, really, pre- I really think Devin's going to get a knockout. He's going to need a knockout. I know that much. It wouldn't shock me if he did. His power is looking way different at 140. So it will look real look bad on Ryan because people like because Devin Haney's not a puncher, so it will just be embarrassing on Ryan's part to be honest. If that happens, because people like us understand boxing, to casuals they'll be like, "Oh no, he they know he doesn't. He's not a puncher, Devin." It's so. not embarrassing for Ryan to lose to Devin. Um, Devin is better than Ryan, so we Ryan is, is the underdog. It would be actually be more embarrassing for Devin to lose to Ryan. Like Devin losing to Ryan would be a career setback. Right now, nobody thinks Ryan is better than Devin. Most of us didn't think he was better than Tank. Um, I don't even think he could beat Pitbull Cruz. No disrespect to Ryan. It's just styles. Like that's yep. just it. Styles, skill level. Like I don't think Ryan fucking with the top top tier guys. I still believe that he's probably top twenty in the world in his division. Yeah, but all his fans think that he's going to beat Devin Haney. That's the thing is. Well, it's not that they don't really believe that. It's just that they're fans. So you just ride or die. You know what I mean? Fans, when they find out unsettling things about their idols, they, they say, oh, there's no way. There's no way this is true. You must be lying because they're fans. They're idolaters. Right, right, right. So let me ask you a question. Even with Pitbull Cruz, who do you think is his next fight? It should be either Sabriel Matias or Tank Davis. Yeah, I think, but Tank I think that it's going to be Tank because um, Pitbull Cruz is the easiest way for Tank to get a belt at 140. Pitbull is the smallest champion at 140. And Tank Davis isn't going to be able to continue to pull the rehydration clause shit. He's going to have to go to 140 and, and um, fight those big dogs. So why not start out with somebody that's around the same size as you as opposed to jumping up there and challenging Sabrio or, or Devin Haney or even the Tiafimo Lopez, who even though he's going to be a little bit closer in size to Tank, he has more versatility in his offensive attacks than Pitbull. Pitbull is pretty much meat and potatoes, straight straight line fighter. As this is all lining up, I believe the next fight for Devin will be right will be uh Teofimo. That's a great fight for Devin. It's a good fight for boxing, man. I, I, okay. I want to see some good fights, man. I, I, I think- neither one of them gonna lay down. Devin isn't going to do what Jermaine Ortiz did because he knows the narrative. So Devin, that's the thing about Tank. Tank, since he's shorter, Tank was forced his entire life to really bring the fight. And it's helping him as a professional to win over the casual fans. Devin, he's taller, so he's been able to win and be successful without having to force anything. He could just jab and move, stab, jab and move. You can't do that when you're 5'5 with a 67-inch reach. You got to bring the fight. So Somebody Tank's, Tank's um, short stature has been the best thing for his career, but I don't think it's going to be the the best thing when he goes up, up against Devin Haney. Yeah, I think I think I think Tank is going to lose that fight to Devin because of the jab and the height, and and it, it's just because Devin's a bigger fighter. That's it. Me, and Devin's pers- younger, Devin's bigger, and Devin is getting much more experience. He's way more active than Tank Davis. Yeah, but yeah. but what if that but what if that Tank that the what if the Tank that fought bro? Um, Barrios shows up to fight Devin. It's He'll not probably be kill him. Oh yeah, I mean you have Bar Devin Haney is like if Mario Barrios had footwork, Tank would have lost the fight. But you like got Barrios right. couldn't get in and out. Barrios when Barrios early on in the fight, Tank was landing the left hand to the body, taking away from Barrios' legs. By the time the middle rounds, Barrios couldn't even move away from the punches. He had to sit there and trade with Tank. He was forced to trade with Tank Davis, a man who was not only more athletic but hits harder than him. Devin Haney doesn't have to sit there and tr- trade with shit. Devin could box and move for 12 rounds comfortably at a, at a nice pace. So it's going to be a totally different ball game. The only way Tank going to win is if he puts a hellacious amount of pressure on Devin and Devin cracks under pressure. Bro, somebody said Pitbull stops Haney and Haney stops Tank. No. Uh, I think, I think, I think <laughs> destroy Pitbull. Haney will make Pitbull look like he's not even that good. Because of the style, like literally, Pitbull is a Pitbull is shorter than Tank, smaller than Tank. 
and you got Devin Haney, five foot nine, seventy two inch reach, like bro, it's like you like you boxing a little kid, and it's not like Pitbull is coming in from all different angles like Loma. Pitbull coming in a straight line, so Devin just going jab, jab, right hand clinch, jab, jab, right hand clinch, slide to the left, slide to the right. You know what I mean? Like that's all you're going to do. Chris Cross. Exactly. Unanimous decision now, y'all. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, I get it, man. I, I just can't wait to see what happens with Pip uh, with uh Tank and Frank Martin. I really think Frank Martin got the got what it takes to to beat to beat Tank in and going twelve rounds. If it goes twelve rounds, it could be a possibility that Frank may come out with a W. Oh, man, hell no, I'm sorry. Hey, stay solid. Thanks for the gifts. If y'all got gifts, send them. But I'm gonna tell you straight up. There is no way that Frank Martin could beat Tank Davis on decision. It's not about boxing. This is about money. Tank is a super duper duper star. You know what I mean? Tank is up there. Remember in school, they tell you follow the drinking gore. They told all the black kids, oh, this is, the, this is how they, they navigated the Underground Railroad. They looked up at the stars. When they looked up at the stars, they saw Tank Davis. I, I get you. I agree with that before money. He's a super star. You know what that means? PBC will not allow him to, be, to lose a fight on decision to Frank Martin. Frank Martin is 30 years old. He's at the end of the road. The beginning of the road is also the end of the road for Frank. And I don't mean that like in a bad way. It's just he started boxing late. So let's say he were to knock out Tank and become a champion. He probably going to be champion for three or four years. And then that's it. You know what I mean? So he like boys to men. End of the road. That's it. So you think so you think Frank Martin need a knockout? Yeah. That's it. That's all, that's all he could get. He, he's not going to be able to beat Tank on, on, um, on the cards. No, nobody. Let me tell you something. Barrios and Tank in the early rounds, they were going at it. But when you look at the Georgia State Athletic Commission, they gave damn near all of those rounds to Tank Davis. Unofficially, Tank was losing a fight until the, the middle portions and he started getting those knockdowns. Officially, Tank was safe, smooth sailing because it's about the money, baby. Money, baby. And Floyd Mayweather and, and PBC, this is a PBC production. But they're both in house fighters, but Tank is the golden goose. Tank is the one who Floyd made plans for for the next, you know, five, six years to try to make another Ryan Garcia 1.5 million pay-per-view buys or whatever. So there's no way um, Frank is going to win a decision. Frank Martin, if you're listening to KJR TV, you better go out there and try to stop that man. That's it. Other than that, you can hang it up. He's going to get clipped though, KJ. Fuck it. You in there with Tank Davis, you can get clipped trying to trying to run. You can get clipped trying to box. Go out there and stop Tank, and you'll become a star. You shut up the whole world. You're going to have to rematch him, though, and you might get stopped in a rematch. That's how that shit. When you stop somebody, yeah, shit can get crazy. Go for the stoppage. Fuck boxing. Go for the stoppage. That's a bar. Fuck boxing. Go for the stoppage. I think that might be a game plan that they already preparing. Derrick James got that square. He probably got that uh, already mapped out for Frank, man. Going into the fight, this he wants he wants him to pressure pressure tank. Somebody said, Frank, if you out there, do not listen to KGI TV. Look, I'm telling y'all straight up <laughs> what it is with this boxing shit, man. They will Damn. not allow Frank Martin to win a decision over Tank Davis. This is about money. This is yeah, about. I training. agree. I agree. Like this is not about who's your who know who's the best boxer. If it was about who's the best boxer, Rolly Romero wouldn't have became champion. You know what real? I mean? Are you illiterate? You can't read between the lines? <laughs> we we already seen the boxing politics with, with Terrence Crawford fighting front door. Thank you. Uh, Thank we, you. Already, we already seen the bot politics. They wanna they they want to give Terrence that, that fight. They You know they why? Wanted... Because Terrence fucked up twice. Two times. He fucked up when he re-signed with top rank. Now he had to go see Bob Aaron. Okay, now you beat Errol Spence. You beat the the Golden Goose, a uh, uh, PBC, somebody that's made money back to back for them. You have to sign with PBC if you expect them to put you in position to get these fights. Because at the end of the day, Floyd Mayweather was never really his own boss. That was a good market employee, but Al Heyman was above Floyd, and it's somebody that's above Al. There's no individual man just out here calling shots like that's not how this game go. So Terrence, they signed you on a one fight deal. You beat Arrow. If you really wanted to be a dude that's able to sit at the table and act like you pulling strings, like Floyd act like he was pulling strings. You sign with PBC and then they say, okay, we got turns. 
We want to send Terrence to fight Jamel Charlo. We we want to send Errol to fight Fundor. Errol, you beat Fundor, you get a belt. Um, Terrence, you beat Jamel, you get a belt. Now y'all had a rematch at 154. That's all business. That's easy money. But they was never going to allow you to come and act like you're running shit and you just want individual. That's not how this shit works on a, on a big scale, on a large scale in the, the world of business. Yeah, I definitely agree with you, uh, Kate. Uh, I, 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 everybody's just still trying to um, do that, you know, that Floyd move. But the I think Floyd move was a it was a sham. Floyd was never his own boss. When you make a billion dollars, y'all see that shit that Ryan Garcia posting on, and I ain't gonna say get too much into it. But y'all see what Ryan Garcia calling out the so called industry. When you make a billion dollars, you have a boss. You know what I mean? You there is no oh I made a billion dollar. No, it's a billionaire club. You were allowed to make a billion dollars. So although Floyd got people believing that he was his own boss, he was never his own boss. He's not his own boss right now today. So Terrence, don't believe the hype. Sign with PBC, and I promise you, you're gonna be, you're gonna get put in position to get the fights that you want. But ultimately, they're going to try to make the rematch with you and Errol happen because Errol is a proven commodity. Meaning Errol Spence made money for them time and time and time and time again. You only made money for them one time. They even called Earl Spence old. family. Leonard Elby was like, Earl, Earl's family. He's going to get the first dibs. Yeah, Earl ain't, no, ain't a family bullshit. Earl Pammy. That's what he said. Earl is Pammy. He's going to get the first. That's what he should have said. Earl is Pammy. Earl ain't family. Earl made money for them coming out of the Olympics. Earl made money for them back to back. You know what I mean? It, didn't, it got to a point where it didn't really matter who Earl was fighting. It was great that he was fighting for belts. But you know what sold Earl? The, the number one, the market. Texas. Who lives in Texas? Blacks and Mexicans. So you already, once you bring in all the Mexicans, they already have a boxing culture. And then you got the black people who are who are coming to these events. You got the Dallas Cowboys allowing y'all to host fights at the damn stadium. So Arrow was in the right location, the right market. You know what else he did? He had the right style. Arrow was black, but he fought with a Mexican style. You know, right in your face, trading punches. So now he's winning over casuals. He done. He did this for years. Errol did this for a decade. This how he became Errol Spence Jr. This how he became a, a household name in America. Terrence ain't put in that type of work. So Terrence ain't fa ain't family. Well, well, I can't say Terrence ain't put in that work because Terrence fought some. I'm talking about money, but... money. I'm not talking about um. Oh, I got that. Been that's that's I'm not talking about as a boxer. His boxing legacy is uh one of the best and if he if he goes undisputed at 154 we're gonna have to make the argument that he's up there with floyd mayweather i'm not talking about him putting work in as boxing i'm talking about making money he shouldn't even have got the fight with for errol for 50 50. the only reason he was able to get that is because errol spence is a doggy dog dog and errol actually wanted to have turns on his resume although it didn't work out in his favor most fighters would have ducked um terrence crawford and they would have been like look i'm not giving you 50 50. you got to be 60 40. you got to be 70 30. But Errol, he wanted to fight so bad, he gave up a lot to make that's that right. fight that's happen. True. And that's it actually true. ended up being to his detriment because while he was waiting on Terrence Crawford, Terrence Crawford stayed hot. Terrence Crawford fought Avenition. Errol ain't fight nobody for damn near two years and then tries to take on Terrence Crawford. So it worked against him. Wow, 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 man. So let me ask you a question. How do you feel about Shakur Stevenson, man? Do you think Shakur I think the truth he had one bad fight? I just think that he should rematch Della Santo. Get that get no. that get that, get that salt off your name, man. If he rematches De Los Santos, De Los Santos is dangerous. So it's like Shakur wants to come back and show y'all he's offensive. Do you think he could do that against De Los Santos? No disrespect to Shakur, but I don't. I think De Los Santos is a guy that you gotta you have to play it careful. Shakur need to get matched up with somebody that's not so damn dangerous. And um, show y'all that he's exciting, like he did in the um, Jamel Heron fight, like he did he in the Oscar Valdez it. fight. But De Los Santos is a guy that can knock Shakur out. So it's like, why the fuck am I going to go out here and try to be fight an explosive fight? Um, he could. <laughs> hey, I could be wrong. He could get back in there with De Los Santos and wash his ass in the, from the pocket. But I don't think that's a smart move. Sometimes you got to box A. Hey, Anthony Joshua did it in a rematch with Andy Ruiz. Anthony Joshua got in a rematch with Andy Ruiz. And fought a boring, safe fight. The only reason he won that fight is because he had longer arms and was taller than Ruiz. That's it. But Sometimes Floyd you got to play the game. 
with certain opponents. Because if Joshua would have tried to fight Ruiz again, he would have got his ass stopped again. But Floyd did it with Madonna, though, twice. Mm -hmm. You talking about one of the best to ever do it, though. I mean, but you if you're going to call yourself the best, you got to... Yeah, I mean, you're right. Because Shakur said he better than Floyd. Shakur, Floyd, whenever Floyd had a close fight or a bad night, he rematched. He rematched Madonna. He rematched Castillo. He dominated. So Shakur, you say you're better than Floyd, fight De Los Santos again, spank that ass, and prove to everybody that you are who you say you are. Yeah. And that's what you're interested in doing. I can't tell you to do shit. I'm just making these lives and I'm going to post on YouTube. <laughs> Castile, he did, Floyd did it with Castile. He did it with my Donnie. That's why when Floyd was boxing, boxing was on fire because unlike the narrative, Floyd running, Floyd waiting, Floyd fought all the people that they wanted him to fight. And that's why everybody was so interested because they knew every fight uh, for like 10 years, Floyd had a chance of losing. He had a real chance of losing again, stop because he was fighting the best in the world. That's why boxing was on fire. Now guys are fighting fights where it's like, okay, you know what I mean? What's the what's the chance that this motherfucker losing to him? And that's why people aren't interested. That's why that's why Canelo hasn't sold a million pay per view buys since 2017 because he don't want to fight David Benavidez and give the fans the parity that's needed in the sport of boxing. But you know what, KJ? I really think I really think me personally, I really think that um that uh, Canelo is really going to fight Benavidez. I really think that fight will happen. Can you no, imagine? No, 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 the fight ain't gonna happen. You don't think? I I think so. Nah. Canelo wants to get out unscathed. He ain't gonna take that chance against that. Fool. Yep. No, no. I mean, he already got he already got the blemish in the shadow that's Floyd Mayweather hanging over his career. So if you add the Floyd Mayweather ass whooping, which was a, the Floyd Mayweather ass whooping was more of a mental ass whooping where he was getting outboxed and outclassed. David Benavidez is going to be a... Most people didn't even understand the stuff that Floyd was doing to Canelo. You had to slow it down and rewatch the fight and be like, whoa, look at these angles. Look at look at the way he's using his shoulder roll. Look at the way he, he's defending against Canelo. He has Canelo confused. Canelo is on the ropes and doesn't know what to do. You have to really be somebody that's in the boxing to even understand what happened in that fight. The David Benavidez fight is not going to be a, a mental ass whooping. It's going to be a very physical ass whooping, whereas though a Tyler is going to be able to say, damn, Canelo just got dropped. Damn, Canelo just got stopped. Damn, Canelo's wobbly. Damn, Canelo bleeding. Canelo's getting tore up. David Benavidez unleashing these flashy combinations on him. It's going to be a physical ass whooping that anybody can understand what happened. Canelo knows that. He doesn't want that blemish on his record. And if you look at what Bivol did to him, like it was similar to what Floyd did. It was very similar. If you look at it, like, I don't know who won... I don't know whose win was more of an ass whooping, Floyd's or Bivol's, but it was similar. You think Floyd was? Landed way more punches on Bivol. Bivol actually allowed himself to get hit sometimes because he was bigger than Canelo. Canelo wants two hundred million dollars for Benavidez. Yeah, but that's not for Benavidez. That's for retirement. He said, <laughs> Canelo said, "Listen, y'all want this ass? You gotta pay for it." Wait, hey, look at this guy wrote. He knows he's gonna get fucked up. He just look at said, this guy. Okay, cool, cool. You want me to walk the plank? Y'all want me to be the sacrificial lamb? then pay me. And I'm not mad at him for saying that. That's actually smart. Because if he about to get his ass whooped, why not get compensated uh, more than ever? Because nothing will be the same after the David Benavidez fight. His legacy, the way that the Mexican fan base view him, the way that I view him, the way that you view him, is going to change because he's going to get dominated by David Benavidez. So, okay, let me ask you a question, too. What do you think um, Adula Mason next biggest test should be? Floyd Schofield. He should fight Floyd Schofield. Bro, we have too many casuals in the in the chat, bro. Look, yeah, look at this cat in the chat. Yeah, look at this guy just wrote KJ. Benavidez is not dropping Canelo. If GG and B Ball couldn't do it, Benavidez isn't doing it. Triple, G, shit. Triple G was spawned with a, a 14 year old David Benavidez. Benavidez is a larger man than Triple G. Benavidez throws more punches than Triple G. Benavidez is more accurate, believe it or not, than Triple G. David Benavidez has the second highest connect percentage in all of boxing. The only person in front of him is Bam Rodriguez, he's a lightweight. No, he's a, he's a flyweight, excuse me, even worse. So David Benavidez is a freak of nature. His stamina for his size, his speed, his combination at that size, that's something that you don't see every day. Canelo knows and, and then somebody said, just pay up, and Canelo will just accept the fight with emojis. Like, nobody will want to pay that much money to see, like, no, almost... No, no. You know what? They're going to give him a lot of money. He might end up getting... Listen, sometimes if you ask for 200 million, 
you get 130 million. But if you would have asked for 130 million, you would have got 80 million. So Canelo asked for 200 million. Canelo would take 130 million to fight David Benavidez. And that's going to be way more money than he deserved for that fight. Because David not even going to bring the, uh, David isn't going to bring the fan base. But historically and legacy wise, it's not going to be nothing like this. This is going to be the biggest fight in Mexican history ever. Why is Roley fighting 12 rounders a couple fights earlier than Kid Austin? Because they rushed Roley Romero's career. Roley Romero was always in the plans. Once they saw that Roley could talk that shit, they planned to fight with him and Tank Davis. Floyd Mayweather and Al, they, they cook, they making money. That's what they doing. It's Floyd money Mayweather. That's what they focus on. So if Roley Romero had to get his career rushed and get thrown in there with Tank, Barroso, and then Cruz, that is just going to have to be what it's going to be. Whether whether Roley likes it or not, understands it or not, if he would have signed with any other promotional co company, he would have been a journeyman. So he signed with PBC. He got to have to be a champion. He got to make seven figures. He had a really uh, good career thus far. His career still isn't over. So let me ask you, who who was the next Floyd? The closest being the next Floyd? Um, Nobody. There will never be another another Floyd Mayweather. Too many things happen. You can't catch lightning in a bottle twice. I'm gonna tell you how remarkable this story is. Floyd Mayweather's father boxes. His father isn't that great. His father is in the streets. His father gets a gun wound to the leg. Father can no longer train and decides to pour all of his boxing knowledge, professional experience into his son. His son is a, a baby. He's holding him up to the speed bag. You understand? Floyd's entire family, his uncle, world champion, uh, Roger Mayweather, um, and then the cousin, which I don't know, I can't think of his name, but it's another one, world champion. So he comes from an athletic family. Roger Mayweather has a 76 inch reach. His father has, I think, around a 72 inch reach. So Floyd's is five foot eight with a 72 inch reach. And I mean, perfect genetics for the sport. Growing up, Floyd is uh, five years old, six years old. His father is saying, hey, get out and come run six miles with dad. You know what I mean? So much shit had to happen in order to produce a Floyd Mayweather. Floyd was around three world-class coaches. Floyd grew up in the sport of boxing. That's all he ever known. Floyd dropped out of school to pursue boxing. Floyd happened to hit the genetic lottery. Like, it, there will never be another Floyd Mayweather. Sometimes you got to take it as it goes. Bo Jackson came in the 80s. There hasn't been a Bo Jackson ever since. Like, that's just life. So, it's not none of them fighters out there is, is going to be Floyd. Kermel Moten don't even fight like Floyd. Kermel Moten throw way more punches than Floyd. And Kermel just started. What about Tank? No, Tank no. didn't barely throw any punch. Somebody said Max Glaze. That's not a glaze, it's called an observation. Uh, hopefully you're not black saying that. In the black community, uh, they teach us to tear each other down. So when you put praise on another man, they look at it as you glazing or they try to put a negative connotation. So I hope that you're not black with the whole glazing thing. And if I find out you're black, I'm gonna block your ass. But anyway, Tank Davis ain't Floyd Mayweather. Tank Davis barely throws any punches. Tank what Davis, about he has a, uh, he's one of the most accurate because he barely throws any shots. You said Devin? Yeah, but Devin got Devin the work the athlete. Floyd was a better natural athlete than Devin. He just is. Floyd is faster than Devin was. Floyd has better reflexes, um, better pull counter, all of that. Yeah, Devin, yeah, yeah. Devin is actually like a Kobe Bryant to, to Floyd's Michael Jordan. That's that's right. That's right. I can see that. I can see that. And it's not glazing. It's just like, it just, I don't think. Well, got to call a spade a spade. If a man becomes one of the best to ever do something, it's not a glazing thing to say he one of the best. Uh, Johnny Cochran was one of the best lawyers to ever do it. He was a black man. Am I glazing? No, he was just that man. Johnny got OJ off. You know what I mean? It, that's just what it is. So if he's better than Jordan. Oh my God. God. Kobe's better than Jordan, bro. No. Oh my gosh, bro. Kobe's no. better than who? You were just somebody saying Kobe better. Jordan, I mean, Kobe knows he's not better than Jordan. He just Hell a competitive no. nut. Kobe knows he's a competitive nut job, and he knows if he got to face Jordan, he's going to come to win. What we talking about, KJ? Jerry Jig, I ain't gonna lie to you. I've been up here for about an hour, so we ain't about to be talking about shit. <laughs> we but we done talked about a whole different, a whole uh, myriad of topics, man. I'm about to get up out of here. Man. Wait, 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 KJ. Before you go, I wanted to read you read you what this guy just wrote. He wrote, "Canelo's only been wobbled once by Cotto's brother. Cotto's brother's stronger than Benavides. Bro, are you fucking crazy? <laughs> we gonna end up on that, man. That's an example of the delusional fan base of Canelo Alvarez. That's when you let your quarter song." get in front of your cabeza you when you're thinking with your heart you can't think with your heart you got to think with your mind bro you know what i mean now i'm, I'm gonna get up out of here man uh y'all have a good saturday 
Um, I gotta catch. I didn't even know Hitchens was fighting. I gotta catch this fight because Hitchens is somebody that that's a, a real threat to Devin Haney. So um, y'all let me know what y'all think, man. I'm out. All right, man, for sure. Peace out. Peace out, KJ.